Hey guys, uh, welcome back, welcome back. I want to go ahead and start making videos um, about questions that you're going to see on the AP exam. I'll almost guarantee you're going to see this, okay? Now, one of the things you guys should probably already know is about increasing and decreasing functions, okay? And the first derivative test. Now, a lot of times on the AP exam, they're going to ask this, okay? They're going to ask, when is, um, sorry, given the function, okay, they're going to ask, find the maximum value of the function, okay? And students get this mixed up. So let's go ahead, I, I did a quick example here with my students. So uh, this is the function, right? First derivative test, what do you do? You take the derivative, okay? Set it equal to zero, and then you're able to find your critical points, right? Now remember, the critical points happen at two places. Number one, where the derivative is equal to zero, and number two, where the derivative is undefined. Well, when is the derivative undefined? Well, it's when it's a fraction. In this case, we don't have to worry about that because polynomials are always continuous. But once you have your critical points, right, you do your number line, all right? And then to the left of zero, you pick a value, let's say negative one. You plug it in here, okay, either here or here. Right here, you get negative one, that's a negative three, and right here, you get another negative three. So negative times negative, positive value. Okay, that means the graph is increasing. Now between zero and two, you, let's pick one. That becomes, if you put one here, that becomes a positive three. You put one here, it becomes a negative one. Positive times negative becomes a negative. And the same thing here, pick a three here, you end up with a positive. So increase, decrease, increase. Now what students make a mistake on, it's a very tiny mistake because they say, okay, oh, there's a maximum here. Oh, the answer is zero. No, okay, no. Because when they ask you, okay, they're going to ask you, what is the maximum value of the function? When they ask this question, the value, okay, they're asking for the y value, okay? So when you're checking for the maximum value or minimum value, all right, you're going to plug in this value here, okay? F of zero, you're going to find the y value here. You have to plug it in here, okay? And in this case, you put zero here, zero here, you get 12. All right. And students think, oh, it's 12. No, don't forget when you're doing these, you also have to check the endpoints. You also have to check the endpoints. You have to check negative two and four. OK, negative two and four. And you end up with negative eight and positive 28. You see that these are the y, the values, the y values. So even though, yeah, there's a maximum here, there's a relative max here at x equals zero. But the but the highest value is at x equals 4, because you can have something like this, where you have a function, right, a polynomial, and the highest y values up here where x equals 4. So be careful that when they ask you for those minimum, maximum values, you got to check the endpoints, okay? I checked f of 2 just because, you know, just for, for the heck of it, just to practice our algebra skills, all right? So that's, that's very, very important, guys, all right? Here's another one, same thing that I do with my students, okay? Derivative, right? Set it equal to zero. We factored right here. Our critical points is five and negative one. Okay. We do the same thing, right? With number line, plug it into the derivative. To the left of negative one is negative two. Negative two here, negative two here. You get negative times a negative is a positive. We pick a number here, we pick zero. And then what do we pick? Well, it becomes negative times positive, right? Negative five times positive one. That gets you a negative. After five is six. Six minus five, that's a positive. Six plus one, that's a positive. So you end up with positive. And there's a max here at x equals negative one. Yeah, there's a max. But what's the maximum value of f of x? That's a whole different story. So what do I have to do? I have to find f of negative one. And students think, oh, it's eight. No, you have to check the endpoints. So f of zero would give me zero, but f of six would give me negative 90. And then, of course, and then this one would be eight. Okay, very, very important. Very, just a very tiny thing, but very important. So you have to read the question carefully, okay? There's a difference between asking what's the max and what's the maximum value, okay? All right, guys. So hopefully that helps you out. Let me know if you have any other questions and keep working strong.